to do a sway. <laughs> Happy Friday. We are back, guys, yes. together. Yes. I Welcome know. <laughs> Praise the Lord for Hallelujah. technology and just being able to be 750 miles apart. Right. And still able to connect. But I definitely awesome. appreciate the in person. It's better. it's better for sure. But um Hello. I got the new Jeffrey Golden playing in the background. If you haven't heard it, go listen to his album because it's fire. Yes, and we do not own the rights to this music. Oh yeah, my. he is. He is pretty epic. Yeah. I like this song. This one? Oh, okay. But yeah. Yeah. How was your day? Man, I've been all over the place. Hey, in, Hi. in Nova Necessity, uh, <laughs> Audacity, uh, man, <laughs> Tardy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, that baby gonna come out laughing, mm -hmm. laughing, she and dancing. Gonna cry. She'll be like, Got you. Yes, I'm so excited for her. This baby, <laughs> me too. I can't wait to meet her. And be like you drove, were driving your mama crazy. Right. Be like we, we had the cash out. We had the cash out to find right. out your name to see your picture. <laughs> Man. Well, awesome. I was your day. It was good. Work wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I looked at my phone at the end of the day and I was like, oh, 43 calls. Wow. Yeah. Was moving them out today. Usually mm -hmm. I only range about 20 some but oh, wow. because of the new line that i'm on the calls don't last this long mm. but it was cool you know it was good i'm glad it's the weekend finally yeah the weekend is great when she overdue well, i thought you were i thought you were doing oh yesterday so she is mm -hmm. she coming she coming in god's timing yes we indeed. can't rush we can't rush let that baby come out when she ready Right. Oh, so please share, tag somebody. We are talking about a very interesting topic tonight. You don't want to miss it. Yes. So tell a friend, tag a friend. We are on my personal Facebook page, but we're also on our Kindred Connection page on IG, mm -hmm. which we didn't say the thing. We always forget to say the thing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I forget to say the thing. I think we usually say it after our little <laughs> okay. after intro. We, so we were after we time. chit chat. Yeah. <laughs> so as she stated, we are Kindred Connection, two generations, one purpose. Telling the truth in total transparency. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> so the topic that we have for this evening um, and I feel like I'm talking weird, so forgive me. I had some dental, a tooth pulled earlier this week, and I'm still recovering. Um, but the topic for this week, or the, the title of our topic for this week is present versus provider. Mm. And you're probably thinking, what does that mean? So, <laughs> the topic came about while I was reading through Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. And in her book, she basically describes basically her life from childhood all the way up until, uh, you know, the White House, basically. Mm -hmm. And as I was reading through and she was telling the story about how her and Barack met and how they started dating, got married, had kids and all of this, he basically had been in politics mm -hmm. the whole time. He was like head of this mm -hmm. and head of that and became mayor and all of these other things I can't remember but throughout the book I kind of made this observation that even when they and even when they had the two girls um that he was gone a lot of the mm. time um he was making money of course providing but mm. he wasn't there mm. so that's how I got the idea or the concept of being present versus being a provider mm -hmm. and I posed the question uh, would you prefer your spouse to be present? And maybe, I guess first, present versus being not present, but being a provider. Um, so he may not be as present as he could be, mm -hmm. um, 
but he's providing for the family, for the household, um, but he may not be present, you know, like physically mm -hmm. for a lot of things. So, mm -hmm. well, how would you answer? Ooh. So when um, Aaliyah brought this topic to me, I'm like, you know what? That is very interesting. Like mm -hmm. the dichotomy, right? So the two sides of the scale or coin or whatever. Do you want or prefer a person who is there, you know, um, at the soccer games, helping put the kids to bed, mm -hmm. helping with dinner, doing laundry, and maybe possibly not bring home the bacon or as much bacon? Right. <laughs> Or would you prefer, hey, I got this. I, I got the household. I can manage this. Um, so you go out and work so that I can manage this. I feel comfortable managing this because I know you're out hustling. And what's the saying? Securing the bag. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, and so it's like, wow, where where would that go? Where would you? And I think it just kind of depends on. Yeah. The individuals, I think it depends on where you are in your marriage. Like yeah. maybe if you don't have kids at that time, mm -hmm. um, you know, both of y'all hustling. Right. And, you know, we, we'll have date night or see each other on the weekends. We're doing the week, we we making the money. But yeah. if I have kids or we yeah. have kids, then it might be a different story. I might be like, no, I'm tired of being the only one changing diapers. Right. So I need to be <laughs> present. So I think it just kind of depends. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I I totally agree. I think, you know, the the two individuals, <laughs> hey, um, involved would definitely, you know, be a huge factor. Um, for myself, I feel like personally, I would want someone to be present. Mm -hmm. Um, not just even for my sake, but for our children's mm -hmm. sake. Any of not in the event that we do have children, but when we have children. Yes. Claim them. <laughs> Need some God babies. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, she also mentioned the idea of if he is present, maybe he isn't bringing in as much money as he could. And being present is not saying that he's not a provider because in both mm -hmm. circumstances, he's both. Mm -hmm. But in the sense, the distinction is that being a provider is that he's not present at home mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. and I again definitely just I would prefer to have someone that's like going to be there because like you said you get burned out or you mm -hmm. start to feel like you're a single parent because right. your spouse is going all the time right. and he might be there in the evening to tuck them into bed which was you know a lot of Michelle's story mm -hmm. but both five o'clock in the morning he was out the door to go work an hour away um, and then by the time he came home, it's like the the kids are in bed and, right. Right. you know, it's just, it was like clockwork. Um, I believe something that she did note was that, you know, they always had like on Friday nights, they always had like a date night, something to like maintain their relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. I think it's still just like week after week after week if you know we only spend you know so much time together because you're away working it's just kind of like i feel like i would kind of yeah feel some type of way at some point yeah even though you you provide and you know what i'm saying and i'm grateful but <laughs> i think it, it it would just it would be a challenge so Angel was saying that as a kid mm -hmm. whose dad wasn't always able to provide the way he wanted, he was always there, so always present. And that's a big part of who she is now. Mm -hmm. So even today, if he can't provide financially, he can come through as a babysitter. Yes. <laughs> or, you know, an ear to listen, I'm paraphrasing. Um, and she can count on him and saying that even though he's in his 60s, if he has to walk to her, if he has yeah. to catch the bus to her, He's going to make it. Yeah. And that is a beautiful testament to Amen. your dad and the relationship yeah. that you have with him. Um, and, uh, Andrea, we were talking about Aaliyah was sharing um, from when she read um, First Lady, former First Lady, uh, Michelle Obama's book, and talking about how um, former President Barack Obama um, <laughs> was not always present. But he was a provider, and just as as a as 
people considering partnerships and being married and spouses, like what a person's preference would be. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I did think of something though as you were talking. Yeah. So do we need to define what it means to be present? Mm-hmm. Because a person could be in your presence. Yeah. They could be in the vicinity and still not be present. Yeah, that's good. You know what I'm saying? So they could be there, but they're still, you know, working or checking their phone or thinking about what they need to do the next day. Yeah. So um, my assumption is that when people are saying that, that they mean, like, you're there. All yeah. of you, your physical body, Mentally, your mental, emotionally, your emotional, all of that. Yeah. Um, but again, maybe for some people, it, it's just enough for yeah. you to be physically present. I'm okay right. if you're on your phone or whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, so I think it's just a matter of. Yeah, like, I think I would, of course, prefer you to be like present, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, because like that's just as, again, because I'm speaking from the woman's perspective, mm-hmm. that's like you're supposed to be that for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not there, of course, God above all, right? Mm-hmm. He comes first. Um, however, if we are in a relationship, if we're married, my expectation of you is for you to be present as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, there are going to be, you know, times and moments where um, it's just, you know, there may, depending on what type of work he's in, he may not always be there, but the the expectation is that, like, as long as I feel secure Mm -hmm. in your presence, if I feel secure that, you know, even if you have to travel for work for a week or so, I'm like, I'm cool with that Mm -hmm. because I know that you're coming back and that, you know, all the time in between, like we're good. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a thought and it kind of went away, but, um, I think basically, like you said, every person has their own definition of, what being present mm-hmm. is and what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a thought too. Thank yeah, you, so go you ahead. Need a moment. To yeah, come up with you. <laughs> so too, in the same way that people define mm-hmm. presence, they might also define provider, provider. Mm-hmm. differently. So, you know, when you mentioned you were like, that's what he's supposed to do as far as being present, and I, I would assume, and if there are any men watching or you watch it later. <laughs> Please chime in because right. I don't want to speak for you. I don't want to speak for the all of, you know, man, um, as this is just my little female perspective. <laughs> but I would assume most men see their job as being the provider. Yeah. First. Yeah. Present, secondary. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not not there, but like definitely right. financially provider. providing yeah. for my family. Like, yeah. I feel like that is tied into their manhood. Mm-hmm. Like, if a dad was like, oh, I didn't read our bedtime story. Like, I don't feel like that. he'd be like, oh, I'm not a dad. Right. Re- <laughs> but if he's like, I'm not working, or I didn't pay this bill, mm-hmm. or the mortgage is not covered. Like, I feel like that would be like, oh, yeah. what am I doing? I'm not I'm not being a good husband or right. dad, you know? yeah. And so, the, the figuring out what that looks like, because again, from the woman's perspective, she might be like, I'm cool with living in a one bedroom apartment, knowing you're doing the best you can and you're still here. Right. Versus we living in a, you know, six bedroom mansion <laughs> and you're you never there. All the time. Yeah. So, th- I think that would, that would be interesting yeah. to see. Definitely. I think both ends have to be defined Mm -hmm. by um you know each person involved and i think something that i mentioned is just like it's a conversation that needs to be had like while dating because Mm -hmm. while i was reading the book also you know as michelle was telling her story i was like well she kind of knew what she was getting into because Mm -hmm. she he was into all of this you know politics and everything social work and all that he was into all of that while they were dating Mm -hmm. so as their relationship progressed like she knew that or my assumption is that she knew that Mm -hmm. there would be a possibility that he would continue to go on and on and on Mm -hmm. to being you know her expectation or her idea or her hope wasn't really because she 
every time he asked about, you know, moving into a higher office, she was just like, <laughs> well, what you doing? Like, right. we already have so much on our plate already. And he's just like, mm, I think I can do it. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, but Barack. And so it's just like, in my head, I wonder, I'm like, well, did they have this kind of conversation before mm -hmm. they got to this point? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's like you can decide um, you know, if this is the type of relation you want to be based off what this person's um, definition is of being a provider or being present. And if it's something that you don't think that you are going to be okay with or that is going to be a challenge or that you're not willing mm -hmm. to compromise or sacrifice, then maybe, you know, you shouldn't go forward with the relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just to speak to the importance of having that conversation of like, what's your long-term goal or what do you see yourself doing mm -hmm. because things can change of course um it may not be his or her idea in the moment but just to have the conversation in general to say hey what if I get a job that requires me to not be at home like right. what would that look like or how would that make you feel so yeah that definitely taps into the conversation part of this mm -hmm. and not only the conversation as far as talking about it but also actually listening yeah and adhering to what is discussed because i haven't read the book i haven't read becoming but it sounds like you know barack was like hey what do you think about this and michelle was like no and barack was like okay i'm gonna do it anyway so <laughs> i'm like well kind of what's the point of having a conversation if you've That's already true. made up your mind <laughs> you're already going to do it so yeah. if you're having a conversation you know while dating and engaged to be you know honest and candid and mean what you say so if yeah. you know either party is like hey no it's really important for me or to me for you to be present and the other person says okay bet Mm -hmm. then okay bet means right you need to be present right later not okay bet i i hear what you're saying and i'm gonna do what i want to do anyway right i hear what you're saying and though it may be important to you this the other end of the spectrum is important to me so i'm gonna do that anyway yeah and from you know the other person's you know point of view really hear what the person is saying mm -hmm. you know because this is not specific to provider or present but <laughs> i think again this is generally speaking, not all women feel this way. I do this. Um, but women have a tendency to hear what they want to hear, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Barack could have said <laughs> while they were dating, this is my plan. And she was like, okay, mm -hmm. no, I'm ride or die. <laughs> but in the back of her mind, she was like, yeah, he, he not going to be like that. He yeah. not going to stay like that. He yeah. not, you know, once we get together. He ain't going to do all he that. He ain't going to do all that. And he might be like, but I told you. Right. I had aspirations to be blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And you didn't listen or believe me. So having those conversations are important, but you got to have them. Yeah. And actually you pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> what Definitely. What yeah yeah I think that that's a good point too um and as I'm reflecting on the book I a lot of what Barack did I feel like the way she worded it if she would have said no he wouldn't have mm -hmm. if she would have said no you're not gonna run for mayor no you're not gonna do for this no you're not gonna run for president he wouldn't have done it like mm -hmm. he waited for her to give him the okay mm -hmm. for everything mm -hmm. so um I think that also makes me think like as women as wives and not only that like all of the the ideas i don't think he necessarily every time he ran for something it was because somebody on the outside was like oh you should run for this you should run for this it mm -hmm. was never like michelle telling him to mm -hmm. do that so then he would come home and be like hmm, i think i'm gonna run for it. and she's like Babe, what we we already got all of this other mm -hmm. stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Like, why you wanna? And he's just like, you know, I can make it work. I can do that. And I think her restraint was a lot of the times like she, throughout all of this, she was f struggling to find time for herself. Mm -hmm. But somehow, even him with all of what he had to do, he was still 
finding time for himself. Mm. And she was just <laughs> like, she's just like, how in the world, like, are you still able to find time to go to the gym? Right. But I got to work. I got full time. Got two kids. Got to get them mm-hmm. to school. Homework. And she's just like, I can't. So whenever something new came up, she's just like, we already have a lot going on. Mm-hmm. But Rock didn't see it that way. Mm-hmm. He's just like, no, it can be done. I can do it. We'll be fine. Right. And it's just like, if you have someone, a man, a male with that perspective, like, mm-hmm. do you just say, you know what? You know, especially if you're married, do you just like, you know what? I'm going to put my trust in my husband. He say, we got it. Or do you put your foot down? Because Michelle could have said no. But she was just like, I'm not going to interfere <laughs> with what he desires or what he believes he can do. Because, you know, he never doubted. He never was unsure. He never was like, yeah, I, I think it'll be too much. He was always like, right. we we can make it work. Right. So as a woman... Ooh. If your man has these these aspirations, mm-hmm. these desires, this mm. determination, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, when do you eventually put your foot down? Because she did it. <laughs> she let him go two terms in a White House. <laughs> you know, it worked out for Michelle. It, <laughs> it worked out for Michelle. And I'm like, it's, it's so much in that. It's so there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much consideration, and I know we have some married people watching so yeah. again feel free to chime in we would love to hear from you get bay and y'all both comment right um <laughs> because again i think it's it's so much to unpack there you know from a again a woman's standpoint not all women can't see for all women not saying that right lots of us though you know would acquiesce mm-hmm. because this is something our, our 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 spouse wants to do. This is something that they feel is important. You know, we don't want to be the reason why they don't do right X, Y, and Z. We want to be support like all of those things. Even if in the back of our mind we're thinking, I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have you know blah blah blah. I'm already burnt. Out. You know, I'm already burnt out. So it, it's that part to unpack. It's the part to unpack where I saw a meme once and. I don't even remember exactly how I was worded, but it was something like from a woman perspective. She was like, yeah, I wish I could just work eight to five and come home and just be done. <laughs> but, you know, I got to work eight to five. I got to come home. I got to cook dinner. I got to take care of kids. I got to, you know, mm-hmm. all of the things. And then maybe finally 10, 11, 12 o'clock, you can right. unwind, <laughs> but only to have to turn around and do it again. And right. The, the, you know, assumption of the meme was that, you know, the guy isn't doing that. Like, he's just working and coming home and chilling. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, you know, mm-hmm. men are like, well, I cook and I clean and I do and da da. Right. And that could be, be very true. Again, you know, right. I'm not making blanket statements, just saying, generally speaking. Yeah. Um. So, so that part of it is like, you know, how do we as women carve out? that time for self-care and our interests and our our sleep like yeah. <laughs> you know you have to be the fancy stuff right. we ain't even talking about mas- massages and pedicures we just like can i get a nap right so you know that part and then also the part of when we do have it all to- when we appear to have it all together mm-hmm. as women especially black women especially black women when when is the expectation not for us to have to tell our our husbands mm. or our mates, I need you, <laughs> I'm good. tired, I hey, <laughs> these your kids too. That's good. And wow. for the husband to be like, hey, you know, mm-hmm. while I am a provider, I am not only providing financially, but I need to also provide emotionally mm-hmm. and and time wise and psychologically. Oh, and, yeah all of these things and it not be on the burden on the woman to be like hey hey mm-hmm. because then she gonna feel bad but you be but as a man be like you know i really do want to whatever take yeah. this second job or work these extra hours or run for me i want to do that but let me look at my whole mm-hmm. situation 
and, and honestly say, you know what, this might be a little bit too much right, right. now. Without my without my wife having to say it's too much and then her feeling guilty or me feeling resentful. Right. Because yeah. now she's saying, right. chill. Yeah, that's good. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't think Ooh, of that part, but... We're going to have to go back and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a really good point because that just brings up the idea that some things shouldn't have to be said. Mm. Like, you... I, I'm, I'm the type of person, I wear my emotions on my face. Mm-hmm. So... And, you know, if I'm really tired or if I'm hangry or something... You gon' you gonna know. And if this is like a week after week thing and you don't pick up on it and mm-hmm. I gotta tell you why mm-hmm. there's I don't know if I wanna say there's a problem, but it's just like some things just shouldn't have to be said. Like especially as a man, like <clears throat> and as wives were to submit, like like you said, sometimes you should be able to make the deci- decision yourself and mm-hmm. say yeah, this is what I want to do. I think it'll be good or, you know, but right now I think it is a little too mm-hmm. much. And, you know, be able to in some way provide relief mm-hmm. for your spouse because you should be able to see that it's a lot going on and that, you know, she would probably need some help or maybe mm-hmm. she just want to have a girl's night and you watch the kids right. instead. Like, right. there should be some you should be taking some initiative at some point mm-hmm. and saying, you know what, you know, I signed up for this too. And again, it's not just enough for me to be present financially, but to be there emotionally, mentally, and mm-hmm. all of that, because then there's just, you just leave room for other things to, to, to rise up. Mm-hmm. And now y'all in counseling or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> because... Huh? You know, y'all either didn't have the conversation or you can't have the conversation because you want to do this. And she like, no, we can't do this. But you like, but I want to. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, fine. And then, like you said, there's this guilt or there's this resentment on either end. Mm-hmm. And so, again, that's just causing strife and, right. you know, causing other problems to arise within mm-hmm. the relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. <laughs> It's a mouthful. It's a, a, a lot, a lot to consider. Yeah. Um, so, I guess that can kind of carry us over into our one of our other questions mm-hmm. is, how do you think the the provider's absence in mm-hmm. this sense um, impacts the family emotionally, mentally, relationally? Which I think mm-hmm. we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but. Um, I think the the impact could be could be great because mm-hmm. I when I was thinking about this I just thought about the fact that I didn't grow up with my dad mm-hmm. and sometimes I just often think how different would my life be if he was there mm-hmm. but not only that like he was like there there right um, and I'm like I I don't know but I feel like I would have you know either had an example that I was like, okay, you know, I want someone like my dad or I don't want anybody mm-hmm. like my dad. Um, but because I kind of was left to kind of like fill in the blank for myself of what role the man was supposed to play in mm-hmm. my life, it kind of left me wandering. It, it left me to be a hopeless romantic. <laughs> um, nice little plug there. You know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's just like, I feel like I could have, as a as a woman now and mm-hmm. I feel like having that male presence it, it makes a huge impact on a child especially mm-hmm. a young girl so um, I think again the the, the, the absence would, would make a huge impact mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it made me think about you know you hear those sayings when a person is like on their deathbed they never say, oh, I wish I would have worked more. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I wish I would have spent more time with my family. Yeah. Or, you know, my kids, my grandkids, my spouse or whatever. Because work will always be there. Yeah. There'll always be a way to make a dollar. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just prioritizing what that looks like yeah. for you and your family. So I think when a person 
when a, a dad is not there, you know, we put a lot of, um, it's my personal opinion, mm-hmm. we put a lot of the weight of parenting on the mom, mm-hmm. you know, kind of as the nurturer and that kind of stuff. But, like, kids need their dad. Yeah. They need healthy role models, mothers and fathers. They need it. So if a dad is not, like, not present for any number of reasons, so not present because of divorce or not present because they just not around or not present because they're married, but you're working all the time. Addicted like, to drugs. Or, yeah, mm-hmm. addicted to a substance. Or there are a lot of ways for a person to be absent. Mm-hmm. Um, so however that looks, it definitely has... Um, you know, lasting effects on the boys, on the boys and the girls. Like you know, mm-hmm. oftentimes we kind of talk about how how boys need their dad. Well, girls need their dads too. You know, there are roles and mm-hmm. responsibilities that you can only learn yeah. from a healthy male perspective. And yeah. I, I I can say this again, not a blanket statement. But just generalizing and also as a person whose dad was not in the picture um, when I was growing up. Like, I, who knows? Like Aaliyah was saying, who knows how my life would be different if I had had that healthy role model, right. you know, in the house. And I know, you know, I have family members whose dad was, you know, physically present. Yeah. But then maybe not emotionally present or physically present, but cheated on their mama. <laughs> or, right. you know, physically mm-hmm. present, but did something else and how how that has influenced them. Yeah. As well. So yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think there's anything good that can come out of yeah. a dad yeah. not being there. Yeah. What do you think about the flip side? Because mm-hmm. I think in this instance or in this kind of conversation, the idea is always that the male is the one that's gone. Mm -hmm. Um, What do you think the impact would be like if it was the other way around? I think it's the same. Equally the same. I think, you know, if you don't have a parent there, so, you know, in this this case, if it wasn't a mom, then I think still you're going to be stunted in some kind of way until you deal with that. Yeah. So I'm not saying you gonna forever be broken, <laughs> but you have to recognize that something wasn't there and do what you need to do spiritually through counseling, yeah, all of the above, right? Uh, to deal with that because it will affect you, yeah. Period. <laughs> like, I think, and I think that's Definitely. the thing. I think we think when something isn't there, yeah, we're not being hurt by it. Mm. You you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I feel you. I think that was an an, an idea that I had for a long time. Um, Like, to this day, like, I still don't, like, I don't hate my dad or Mm -hmm. I've never had, like, this bitterness or this resentment against him. But I don't think I ever truly expressed the fact that, or I've never, I don't even think I've, like, fully expressed the emotions involved with him not being there Mm -hmm. and the impact that that has had on me um I'm aware of it of course as I've gotten older I've you know identified the the effects that it has had on me but you know growing up no my dad wasn't there always but you know he called every year for Mm -hmm. my birthday um you know at least up until I was like 17 or 18 I think Mm -hmm. so you know I just always looked forward to that but I never really um I never really had like this strong like disdain or this strong like hate against him because he wasn't there it's just kind of like the fact of circumstance Mm -hmm. and it's just I didn't spend a lot of time like dwelling on it or Mm -hmm. thinking about it until I got older of course and started dating and I was like (laughs) I feel like I'm attracted to men that's like my father, Mm -hmm. but I don't know my father well enough to know that. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just, you know, like you said, I didn't really think that him not being there was having like this negative effect on me Mm -hmm. until I started like really seeing the effects for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but yeah yeah so (laughs) well thank you robin we're glad that it is doing something yeah um doing something for for sure um yeah, you know, it's, it is interesting, and this is, you know, kind of veering from the uh, original topic, kind of shorter, but not really. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, having having an understanding of what what the absence may yeah. may do is, is very important, and recognizing that it does. So even, you know, if we don't know it, it's there. Right. So, for example, you know, we say t- two generations – Similar story, same story, mm-hmm. one purpose, all of the things. Um, I too didn't realize the impact of not having my my biological father. So I had a stepdad, I had a grandfather, I had an uncle, um, but they weren't my dad. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I don't think I either. I, I didn't realize the impact that that had until so I was in my twenties. And for those of you all who don't know, so I'm a social worker by training. <laughs> and almost every social work counseling site class, they'll be like, most people who end up in this career are in this career because they try to figure out what's wrong with them. <laughs> um, so little did I know. That is so true. Is that I was needing therapy. Um, and so I was going to school to figure out how to therapize myself, I guess. But it was in my 20s when I figured out like, have abandonment issues mm. well i have rejection issues mm. huh. i have daddy issues because <laughs> that is where this seems to stem from like Dang. i was grown you know before i realized that 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 was a thing yeah. and um just in the you know we're we're transparent in my 30s i think when i turned 30 in fact um I reached out to my biological father. I had not seen him since I was probably like 12. And I reached out to him because I was like, in my mind, I was like, if I see him Mm -hmm. and he sees me, then I'm okay. Then I can be like, I'm okay. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. I need you. You know what I'm saying? You weren't there. And (laughs) and I'm good. And I did. I went to go see him. Met a sister that I didn't know that I had for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Um... And I remember, like, like seeing him and being like, okay, he good, I'm good, we good, I'm good, okay. It right. was like, then I should have, should have, like, broke through some barrier, I don't know, like, I should have oh, right. arrived and been okay. Why you weren't there. And not made any more <laughs> stupid decisions. And not even that, like, I didn't even want to have mm-hmm. that conversation, like, you ruined my life, I can't. it wasn't even that. Like, it was just like, I'm 30, this is a pivotal moment. I'm I'm good. Like I'm grown now. I'm I'm real grown. Yeah. And after I saw him, like he started reaching out to me. And finally I wrote him a letter. This is when people still wrote letters just for email and text and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I wrote him and was like, Hey, I wasn't trying to connect. No I wasn't trying to like I, I I literally did this for me. Mm. And I'm good. And I'm glad you're good. I wasn't good. I thought it was good, but like that was how my mind was working yeah. to like address the absence. Yeah, you know, to address him not being there, and then I kind of felt like, well, if I make the step and fix it, then it's forever fixed. Yeah, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But I just share that to say that the absence matters. Yeah. Like it makes it makes real differences, really long does. lasting differences, differences that affect so many other things beyond you know that person not being there so yeah parents moms dads if you're watching be present be present be present yeah and not just physically but emotionally Mm -hmm. mentally um i know we come from a spiritual standpoint but uh just the emotional mental you know makes a huge difference Mm -hmm. um and yeah i think that is you know just pretty much like again my preference would be to have someone that's present Mm -hmm. Um, and of course i intend to be present (laughs) in my child's life lord willing god forbid anything happens 
time. Um, but yeah, I just think it it definitely, you know, makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And a random thought I just got is <laughs> <laughs> how, you know, you have kids who grow up with both parents, mm-hmm. but they kind of like steer away from you know the way that they were raised or Mm -hmm. they venture out on their own you know of course the the bible says you know train a child in the way they should go they won't depart from it but some children grow rebellious Mm -hmm. some people depart from Mm -hmm. it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and it just kind of makes me think of kind of just like the flip side of how even being present sometimes isn't like always just right the it's not just like it doesn't make the the situation perfect or it doesn't mean that for sure um the children aren't going to have issues or that they aren't you know going to go through things but i think it kind of i guess in a in a way lessers the the chance hopefully possible um (laughs) of them having to to suffer through certain things um yeah that was just (laughs) no i mean and that's a good point because i think i mean as we always say, nothing we say is gospel. <laughs> right, yeah. We are not experts in, in anything by any stretch of the imagination. We're just sharing, you know, our experience and, and our thoughts. And, yes, we totally wouldn't want anybody to believe that, like, oh, well, we have heard them say, <laughs> if you're present, then it's, everything's great. Mm-hmm. No, that's not, that's not worth that's it. Not it I think it definitely, though, does you know, give kids a, a more of a fighting chance yeah. if they have two healthy individuals in their lives. And I'm not saying they have to be married, not saying they have to live together, not saying that. Yeah. You can, you know, so if you were divorced or separated or had your children and y'all weren't married, don't, you know, I ain't telling, we're not saying go out and get married. <laughs> we're right. not saying start shacking up. We're not saying, like, we're not saying any of that. We're just, like, both, both having both parents yeah. in some healthy capacity right. is helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, and that yeah. kids still going to be kids. I mean, if you think about Definitely. your own personal life, whether you were in a single-parent household, two-parent household, whatever, we all go crazy in our teenage years. Like, we all... <laughs> Do a little something, something. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I pray they come on back. Come and then, on then back. you know, we call it back like the prodigal son. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's. <laughs> He's like, don't get it twisted. Yeah. The kid is gonna do the most at yeah. some point, probably. In Jesus' name, they won't though. But they will. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 normal, typical human yeah. development. Yeah. So. Just throw that out there. <laughs> I've definitely had my little fair share. But my mom, she was, my mom wasn't, like, strict or anything. She was pretty, like, chill and laid back with my sister and I. Like, we didn't have a bad time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't, like, really have a curfew as long as she knew who we, who we mm-hmm. were with. Um and not come out of saying if I was out with friends, like there was some adult that was like picking us up and bringing mm-hmm. me home. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, she was there, and I think it kind of even, um, I think how she was raised affected how she raised us. Mm-hmm. And so, even growing up, yes, yeah, she was there, but a lot of what she did was spent a lot of time you know focused on providing for my sister and I because Mm -hmm. you know she was a single mom that's what she had to do um so emotionally and mentally though I don't think that it was just always awkward to have like those like dating conversations or Mm -hmm. boys or sex and all of this stuff um and I'm thinking it's just like even that too kind of like again contributes to the overall person and how they respond to like the world and Mm -hmm. interact and all of that thing and and have relationships and things like that um but yeah I kind of lost my train of thought where I was going with that but it's okay but yeah it's okay Um, but yeah so we uh, you know 
brought this topic to you all and thank you for your thoughts and, and your comments um, with regards to provider versus being present and it mm -hmm. seems like we said to find that healthy happy medium yeah. is, is probably important in addition to or, by, or through conversation yeah because it could be i mean it could be totally different it's no absolute no right or wrong answer you have to no do what's cutter. no cookie cutter you gotta do what's best for you yeah. and your family i think we also talked about the importance of you know women being able to speak up and saying what they need or would prefer yeah. while men also <laughs> should be mindful and considerate mm -hmm. um so maybe the woman isn't always feeling like the bad guy. Right. Um, and just that, you know, an, an absence, whatever that comes from, however that stems or starts, can definitely have some detrimental and long-lasting effects. Yeah. Definitely. I think that pretty much summarizes it. Yeah. You just got to do the best you can. You know, it's all we can do. We just out here trying to make it. You know, trusting <laughs> the Lord. Hey, trying to make it. So, anything else? I think, mm, I think that's it for me. Okay, any yeah. updates on websites or um, no. giveaways going on? <laughs> all kind of stuff happening. No, no updates for me. Um, But you can always feel free to check out monetstruth.com. Mm -hmm. Order your 28-day devotional. Yes. Get available it, get it, get for it. sale. Um, and feel free to check out uh, my recent blogs or my latest blog series called A Hopeless Romantic. It covers the details of my last relationship. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Mm, Follow fair. me on Instagram at Aaliyah Monet. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, my turn? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Dr. Chalet here. So, at IG, um, on IG at Dr. Underscore Chalet. You know, Facebook, you guys are on that. Um, Aboutfacecollaborative.com. Um, with the semester kind of winding down, I think I'm going to tweak the website again. Mm -hmm. So, definitely check it out. Um, get you a C-shirt so you can find mm -hmm. all the various T-shirts or C-shirts mm -hmm. there. You can get your 52-week devotional, Arise Devotional Journal on the website. Um, I think we have mugs, too. Um, I'm not sure when the all next... All the goodies. All the goodies. Not sure when the next Asela event is going to be. Definitely being prayerful um, about when that's going to be and what it's going to look like somebody told me i should try something virtual i'm like oh let's consider it <laughs> um so just you know excited about some other things even though this is our next to last live for the year as mm -hmm. far as we know unless the lord says otherwise right we do have some exciting things coming Ta definitely stay definitely tuned. stay tuned be on the lookout be sure to follow us on ig underscore kendra connection i'm super excited like so like in a month a little, over, a little over a month we have stay tuned. A, an announcer so yeah be on the lookout um what else oh sister sharing intimate stories that achieve healing it's been so many posts and memes and stuff about you know you have a story to tell the stuff you don't want to tell is the stuff people need to hear. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the Lord laid this on my heart years and years and years ago. Sister, sharing intimate stories that achieve healing. We all have a testimony. We all have a story to tell. We may or may not always come in contact with the people that need to hear it. Mm -hmm. But through Sister, you can share your story. And it, you know, God willing, can go out to the masses. So go to aboutfacecollaborative.com. Click on all the tabs and see what's going on. <laughs> Catch up on um, old Kindred Connections that we've done. Because this is episode 22. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing this for a minute. We started this in March. Yeah, I think it was like beginning of April. Beginning of April. So like when the, you know, like when this whole COVID thing started, we were like, oh, four weeks. <laughs> Six, you know, COVID's going to go right. away. It'll, it'll be fine. We'll just do this while we're quarantined. 
22 plus weeks later. <laughs> What's six it months later. We're still doing this thing. So we're just super excited about, you know, how the Lord uses things that seem like they're, you know, bad and negative and Man. turns them for a good, right? Amen. So check out the website. Click on other things. So monetshoot.com, aboutfacecollaborative.com. Um, Aaliyah Monet on IG, Dr. Underscore Chalet on IG. Check out all the things, the blogs. I feel like I got a blog in my spirit. <laughs> Come on. In your shondo. Look, in my shondo. So, <laughs> just never down. Never know what you're going to get. So, definitely stay tuned. So, next week is our last live. Um, for the year. For the year. I, I keep saying it unless God says otherwise because I feel like we're just going to pop up one Friday when y'all least <laughs> expect it because the Lord's going to drop a random topic in one of our spirits. But um, if he doesn't, if he doesn't, next week is our last five for 2020. Yeah. The most epic year ever. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Ever. So... Thank you guys. We love you. We appreciate you popping on and commenting and sharing and tagging and all of the things. So we are Kindred Connection, two generations, one purpose. Telling the truth in total transparency. Bye. Bye.